Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the Colorado Rockies franchise. Now, I first want to start out by saying thank you so much for the support in this series. It's been incredible so far. Now, we are into season two, and our MLB team is not looking good. So today, I want to take a look at the top prospects coming up in the upcoming draft. Now let's talk about the blue chippers and the idea of what I want to do in this draft. I want to draft guys that are ready pretty soon. I don't want future prospects in the first three rounds. I'm going to pick guys that are close to the MLB ETA right now. But let's start with the blue chips first. And we have them fully scouted. Everybody has them when they start off this game. But we're going to look at Tommy Newcomb. He is a, about an 80 potential, but 65 overall right now. I'm sure that will be somewhere around 65. It won't be exactly 65. But he is one of the most ready-made prospects, as close as you can get as far as pitching goes with these blue chippers. Now, he is a strikeout pitcher. He doesn't give up a whole lot of hits. Um, but he's going to need to have some work with control. I think that that's the one thing that he can work on. But I really do like him. He's out of UCLA. He's a very good pitcher. I think he's got some huge potential. He's got a big fastball as well. Now, Muhammad Willingham is the second guy. Now, he is probably the closest in, as far as ETA. Now, we don't have any film on him, but he's out of Pennsylvania, six foot four. He's got an awesome bat. Power versus left is 70 out of 80. Vision is 70 out of 80. So he's got excellent potential with his bat, which is something I'm really, really looking forward to. Hopefully, we can get it done with him. I hope he's available. Now, the guy in the second round that I'm really looking at is Eli Rivera. He's going to come in at about 70 overall and about 65 potential, so he'll probably be like a C potential, but I think that his bat can warn him maybe even a boost. You know, we have those minor leaguer of the year boosts that we can give out, and plus, if he outperforms his potential, the game naturally gives him boosts as well, gives prospects boosts as well. He has an awesome bat in college. He plays for Oregon. He's going into the draft this year. And one of the reasons why he has such low potential and not a high potential is because this year he took a little bit of a dip with his stats. You know, he does pop out a lot. He doesn't really strike out a lot, but he does have a big power bat for only a 5'7 outfielder. He is amazing. He also has great speed as well. Low potential, but very good prospect right now. He's going to be pretty MLB ETA ready pretty soon now in that second round i'm also looking at bj gustafson now this guy is a kind of down the road potential type of guy but his hitting zones are excellent versus right six foot five as a catcher that is huge and hopefully you know i can get a good catcher as far as hitting goes because buster posey is getting older and we signed him to a two-year deal and it was probably just a deal to you know kind of relay him into the next generation of catchers and i think that that's my plan with him he also could move to first base but my plan with charlie blackman is to move him to first base and move a outfielder out to left field to kind of build a better defense out there so gustafson is a guy i'm looking for at looking at at catcher and he's a very good prospect right now but he's more of down the road type of prospect now, Willie Parra is a guy that I'm looking for also in the middle rounds, probably the second, third, maybe even fourth round if he's available there. He's 21 years old, six foot five, excellent size. He's a lefty. He's got uh, very, very good stuff. I mean, he is a true strikeout pitcher. And one thing that we lack in our organization right now is a left-hander left -hander to go to. We do have Mike Salucci. He's our top left-handed prospect, but you know, Parra's got that stuff. And look at the curveball, just freezes the batter, late swing. I mean, this guy can really strike some guys out. The last guy I want to look at here is Alberto Polito. Now, I don't have him scouted very well, but look at his hitting zones right now. Another shortstop. I mean, I'm not sure what's going to happen at shortstop with us. You know, I love Jose Iglesias, but a future, Brendan Rodgers is there, also Ryan Valade, but I'm not sure about Ryan uh I'm not sure about Rodgers or Valade. I think both of those guys are pretty much wild cards right now. I don't really know what our future is going to look like there in the middle infield. So we are not starting the season out well, but we are nearing draft day. So I'm excited about that. Let me know what you guys think of those top six or so prospects. And obviously you guys still will be renamed to a lot of those guys, but our first round pick 
is not going to be renamed like I do every year. I'm not going to rename that. But then I will rename the first round picks for every other team. So looking, looking around the MLB, uh, your Alvarez is absolutely killing it, leading the league in home runs for the second straight year. And he's also up there in average as well. And then Sean Manea in the AL leads uh, the MLB in wins with seven. So the Rockies are 14 and 30. Now we go up against the Padres in a division divisional series here. And we face Blake Snell. How about this? Nine starts, three and two on the year. And we put Mike Leak on the mound. We signed him last episode. He's only got three innings pitch. I wanted to get him some relief work before getting just throwing him into the rotation, getting him a couple of innings. And we did that, and he pitched actually pretty well. So let's see how he does versus San Diego. Here he gets a strikeout versus Delano De Shields, and then Tatis comes up, and he cannot touch that outside cutter and two strikeouts in the first inning for Mike Leak. How about that? So how about we move on to the second inning? Here's Buster Posey at the plate. He gets a pitch right over the middle of the plate. He doesn't miss that one, and that one is a hit to center field. Now, Posey has no speed. That's the only, that's the big downfall to Posey. I think that, you know, if he improved on that, maybe we could have had have him long term. But I think that speed is really, really a liability as Garrett Hampton comes up and flies out to right field. Danny Santana comes up in the third inning. He's hitting below 200 on the year, along with many of our outfielders so far. I think Charlie Blackman is the only one hitting over at like 230 at this point. Here is uh, Mike Leak up to bat. He does bunt the runner over. So now we have a man on second base. Nuki Ray at the play. He is 0 for 1 so far. High heat. And he watches that one. That is ball four. So now guys on first and second. Charlie Blackman at the plate. He hits one hard up the middle and gets past Blake Snell. This one should score one. And it does. It's going to be 1-0 here in this game as Colorado takes the lead on the road. Buster Posey up to the plate next. Guys on first and second, and he whiffs on a terrible swing. That is a slider on the inside part of the plate. He goes fooled. So on to the third inning. Here is Barry Gasaldo at the plate, who's their leadoff hitter, and he hits a liner down the right field line. It is caught, though, by Nuki Ray, and we double up the runner at first base. So Leak looks good through about three innings as we move on to the fifth inning. Nuki Ray at the plate, and he just absolutely bombs one but not enough power on that one. It's caught at the warning track. Jose Iglesias at the plate who hits one hard to left side and it's snagged and thrown on to first by Machado. As now we move on to the bottom of the sixth inning, Mike Leak is pitching a great game so far. Here he gets a batter to just break his bat, hit one right back up the box, and it's just a simple ground out. Gasaldo up to the plate now with two outs. Ground ball, Hampson. Backhand throw on the first, and it is going to be just in time. And how about Leak in this one? On to the bottom of the seventh inning. Here is Tatis at the plate. Just a liner back to Hampson at second base. And Leak is looking good. Two outs here as that brings up Manny Machado to the plate. And that one will be one of the few walks he will surrender in this game. Eric Hosmer at the plate. He hits one hard to the left center gap. And we will cut that one off and let it drop. We don't go for the catch. Charlie Blackman throws it into the cutoff man. But now they got guys on first and second. Austin Nola at the plate. But it's just a ground ball back to Mike Leak. And we're out of seven innings. Leak is looking good. Now on to the top of the eighth inning. Here is Jose Iglesias at the plate. Such a good hitter. He gets enough wood on that one to push it to center field. It drops before the center fielder. And now we have a man on first base with one out with our three hitter, our best hitter, Charlie Blackman at the plate. One, two count. He gets a pitch right over the middle and he won't miss that one. The pitcher, Dan Altavia, makes a mistake and that one is gone. Charlie Blackman, 431 feet, his eighth home run of the season. Could Blackman be a all-star this year? I'm not sure. Jose Iglesias could be the all-star out, out of our team. So on to the bottom of the ninth inning. We, they have a runner on second. Mike Leakes going for the complete game shutout, but that time he gives up a hit up the middle, and that one will surrender the first run of the game. RBI single by Manny Machado. That brings in Jacob Junis out of the bullpen. I want to get him. He will have a save opportunity here up 3-1. to one. As that brings up Eric Hosmer to the plate, low pitch, and Eric Hosmer goes up the box, and that one will get through the middle. And now 3-1 to one game in the 
game-winning run is at the plate. That brings up Austin Nola to the plate. And with a 3-2 count, he just pops out to right field, and the Rockies will get the win. Good divisional win versus San Diego, and we get a victory here 3-1 to one, as Jose Iglesias and Charlie Blackman come through to give us some insurance late in that game. So looking at the month of May, it was just, I mean, it's a pretty depressing schedule there. I mean, you can only see like five wins this month, and we lost a whole lot of games. And our offense has been lacking. We are 28th in average, 28th in on-base percentage, and actually 25th in ERA, too. So both sides are doing pretty badly. And I look at Brendan Rodgers hitting about 270, just about, and I just need another bat up here. And I think that Rodgers could help. Garrett Hampson, I'm going to actually move him to the outfield. I'm going to try this out because, you know, Toppy is hitting below 200. He's going to have to be moved down. Daz is hitting just about 200. I mean, barely over it. And then uh, Danny Santana is hitting under 200. But I like Santana just for the depth. So we just need to move somebody down and move somebody up. So Toppy is going to move to AAA. Hampson's going to move to center field. And I want to see what that is going to look like because Hampson is a big speed guy. He's at about 95 speed now. I don't know why his speed keeps decreasing, but he's at 95 speed and um, Tapia is not doing well. So he's going to move out to center field and then Rodgers will move to second base. So I will try Rodgers at second base. I will try Jose Iglesias at shortstop. Uh, he's been the shortstop there. He's a better fielder. He's got a better arm, everything. So Rodgers will... Uh, move up to the MLB level let's see what he's got man I mean we got to give him a chance we can't just give up on him I know he's got a potential I know he's got value in trades but I want to see what I have he's a middle infielder who I want to give a chance to so we'll have to see how it goes so we're playing the Texas Rangers here on the road let's see what Brendan Rodgers does I'm going to actually bet him in the leadoff spot this game just to see what he does so here he is up to the plate for his first at bat here and he hits one up the middle first at bat of the season for brendan rogers is going to be a hit hopefully that is a sign of good things to come from him will benson is also close to coming up i definitely don't want to rush him but i want to see what rogers can do as well nice start to this season for him so that brings up Ryan McMahon here with two outs. He goes up the middle, and Rodgers is going to round second, heads to third. So now we got guys on the corners here, and that's going to bring up uh, Buster Posey to the plate here. 3-1 count inside curveball, and he's going to watch that one. It's out of the zone. Okay, now base is loaded. Nuki Ray up to the plate, who hits one hard up the middle, and he gets through. That one will score one. It rounding third, heading home is McMahon. He scores two. It is two to nothing here on the road for the Rockies good start to this game got to give it up to Rodgers for getting us going here here is Hampson at the plate a little check swing and he went around not sure about that one but I guess he even thought he went around he was already running so John Gray on the mound for his ninth start of the year one in three on the season one two nine whip I don't think he's doing terrible to be honest with you I still like him he's actually the second best starter we have right now this year behind Derek Rodriguez. So here he is in the first inning, gets a nice ground ball out, and that brings up Nick Salak to the plate. Two outs, a little tapper right in front of the mound, and Gray will throw on to first, and that one will be an out at first base. So Danny Santana up to the plate here in the second inning. He absolutely crushes one deep to right field. It's got carry, and it knocks off of the top of the wall. That was 374 feet. Need to be 376 just about, but it's a double. And now that's his fourth double of the season. Daza up to the plate. He's hitting about 228 on the year. He gets enough wood on that one. It drops in the center. It's now a three to nothing game here. As Daza gets caught in a rundown, he thought they were gonna go home on that throw. And he rounds first pretty hard and gets tagged out by Gasaldo. So on to the fourth inning. It's now a 3-0 game. Here's Greg Garcia at the plate. He hits one deep to right field. John Gray misses his spot, and it's a home run. Great hitting by Garcia. He brings this game within two runs. And now it's 3-1 as we move on to the fifth inning. Brendan Rodgers back at the plate now. He's already got a hit in this one. He hits this one to right center. 
that one is a good start. It drops into right center, and that one knocks off of the wall. A double and no outs here in the fifth inning. Let's see if we can come around to score now as that brings up the middle of our order. Blackman up to the plate here with one out. 2-2 two, two count. This one is low, and Blackman absolutely blasts this one to right field, and that one will be runners on the corners here. Here still one out in this inning. Ryan McMahon, a guy that I've held on to at this four spot. He's hitting decently, not great. And here is a pop-up to left field. We're going to actually tag Rodgers. This is a short throw. We're going to tag him. Rodgers goes home. And the throw is offline. He would have been out if the throw was online. But that's what I was banking on right there, that throw being off. And Rodgers scores his second run of the game. So Hampson up to the plate now in the eighth inning, now with a comfortable 4-1 to lead. Here's a hit to the right side, and it gets down it, into the right center gap. Hampson is going to round second, head to third. Posey and another runner will score. It's 6-1. to one. And how about that? The Rockies putting together a nice road uh, run outing. And now here's Santana up to the plate in 6-1. to one. He strikes out with a man on third base. You just need to put that one in play. Here's Daza now with two outs. He has good contact on this one, but it does not get down in center. Six to one is still the lead here as we move on to the ninth inning. John Gray going for the complete game here, only giving up one run so far. And this one is a shot to right field. It gets all the way to that deep corner and right, and that one will be off the wall, thrown to the cutoff man. Rogers throw to third. And it is going to be an offline throw. A triple here for Texas. It's now a 6-2 to two game. Is that one will be the end of John Gray. We bring in Michael Gibbons to get the last two outs. He has a 1-8-8 ERA. He's pitching phenomenal. 31-10 as far as strikeouts and walks. And now that brings up Nick Salak. But here he does walk Salak. So now guys on the corners here. Joey Gallo at the plate. Men. On the corners, 2-1 count. He goes to opposite field, and Givens gets too much of the zone. And how about this? Off of that home run, it's now a one-run game in the bottom of the ninth inning, the 14th home run by Joey Gallo. Here is Bob Tito to the plate, one of our subscriber recruits who is now the starting catcher for the Rangers. He hits one to the left side, and now the game-winning run is at the plate. This is Porter Witt. 3-2 count, one out here in the ninth. This is a pop fly down the left field line. This is Daza on the run, and he runs it down. Good catch by Daza. He gets it into the cutoff man, but he overthrows him, and nobody is there for the backup, and the runner advances to second base. So 6-5 to five here with the men on, men on second, and that's going to bring in Robert Stevenson. We need the save here. We need one out. Is that brings in Nate Lowe, 0 for 3 in this game. He hits one hard to left side, and it's off the glove of Nuki Ray. And he throws it home, and that throw is offline. What a play, and the Rangers will tie this game. 6-6. Six six. You've got to be kidding me. Nuki Ray had that in his glove. All he had to do was just catch an easy liner, and now that brings up Tavares to the plate. Man on second but it's just a fly ball, and this one is going to extras. How about that sequence to tie this game up? So Texas scores five runs in the ninth to come back and tie this up, but here in the 10th inning, here is Ryan McMahon, who gets some good wood, and that one is gone. Home run to left field, and Ryan McMahon shows off the power. That's why I love him. He doesn't hit for high average, but he has the power bat. And now that brings up Danny Santana still in the 10th inning. Man on third base, that's Garrett Hampson. And he crushes one. That one is out of here. The second home run of the inning. It's now a four-run run, four run lead. Danny Santana's fifth home run of the season. We move on to the bottom of the 10th inning. Here's Joey Gallo back at the plate now as the Rangers do get one in extras. And how about this? Now they're threatening with the bases loaded. This is a deep fly ball. That one could have ended it. And now they have men on the corners. We just need one out. But the game-winning run is at the plate. This is Isaiah Kiner Falafa to the plate. And let's see what he does. 10-8 to eight game. Ground ball to the right side gets through past Rodgers. It's now a 10-9 to nine game. Can you believe it? 
This is happening again. Porter Witt to the plate now, 0 for 4. He hits one to the right side. That one gets down. It will score another run. Four run inning for the Rangers. This game will just not end. So Jordan Sheffield on the mound now. His 22nd pitch is gonna be on the way. One, two count. Nate Lowe, ground ball up the middle. And it will just be a throw on the first and we will get out of this inning. But how about this? The Rangers score nine runs in the last two innings. So top 12 here now. Nuki Ray at the plate with a man in scoring position and he walks. So now it's bases loaded, two outs. Garrett Hampson to the plate who is four for five in this game. He gets an inside pitch and he's just late and it's a lazy pop up to second base. And the Rangers have a chance to win this one. They only need one run. So now in the bottom of the 12th inning, here is Salak at the plate. Ground ball to second. We got to go home with this one, and it's going to be the game. The Rangers come all the way back, and that one will do it. The Rockies in a game where we had a comfortable lead couldn't even close it. We break the hearts of our fans. We know the fan base is going to be upset over this one. And how about that comeback? Garrett Hampson went four for six in his game. Rodgers went two for six in that game, six at bats. That was a long game right there. And we just could not hold on in this one. I just got to say, our team is doing so terrible right now. We have tons of guys hitting in the low 220s, even below that. I think a fire sale could be coming. I'm not sure who's going to go, but there's a lot of guys that are candidates. Our, our outfield is doing just absolutely terrible, with the exception of Charlie Blackman. I think that all of those guys are available for trade. And a lot of the guys in the starting rotation also. Even I could think about Jose Barrios being traded because, man, he has not worked out so far. And we made it. It wasn't even a big, yeah, I guess it was a big trade. We gave up a lot to get him. So we might just play that one out, but let me know what you guys think of Barrios and maybe you think we should get something for him in trade already, trading him away because the rebuild seems like it's fully on now because we are in trouble this year. We're not competing this year and we're going to try to get better for the future. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. Thanks for tuning in to this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think of the college prospects as well as who you think we should trade. So stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go.